Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Mystery Saxon Sarcophagus. During renovations at England's Lincoln Castle in 2013, archaeologists discovered a stone sarcophagus near the ruins of a previously unknown church on the property. They believe the casket contained the remains of somebody terribly important, perhaps a Saxon king or a bishop. When the team opened the sarcophagus, they found a skeleton wearing leather boots. But the only way to have any idea who the person was, or when they were buried, was to run further tests. Researchers determined the bones belonged to a man who likely died during his 40s, sometime between 1035 and 1070. He suffered from degenerative bone diseases and was probably in considerable pain, according to project manager Mary Powell, who spoke with the BBC. It's unclear whether the team identified the man, but the rare discovery of an undisturbed grave from the little-studied Anglo-Saxon period is nevertheless a valuable find. The research team found many important items at the site, including the limestone sarcophagus and a Roman bronze eagle's wing from the 1st century AD. The treasures will now be a part of a very important exhibition. Number 9. Forest Inside a Sinkhole Scientists recently announced the discovery of a 630-foot deep sinkhole with an ancient forest at the bottom in southern China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. As a size reference, 630 feet is about half the length of the Empire State Building. This area is famous for sinkholes and caves. This particular one is rare because it is very deep, but enough light filters in which allows the large trees to grow. A team ventured into the hole and immersed themselves in the dense, chest-high vegetation, where they found trees measuring as high as 131 feet tall. That's two and a half times as tall as the Hollywood sign. They also found three entrances to the cave. Sinkholes and caves are formed when rainwater dissolves bedrock, causing it to collapse. It's an environment that's truly untouched by humans and may contain undiscovered species of plants and animals. When a sinkhole is big enough to let in light, it helps plants grow and life continues to flourish. Some have become safe havens for wildlife, lost worlds where people can't reach. The newly discovered forest marks one of the 30 sinkholes scientists have found in the region, which is a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 8. Ancient Underground Complex In 2017, Turkish authorities learned of a planned looting in Bajbuk in the country's southern region where a group of criminals discovered an Iron Age complex under someone's home. Luckily, police stopped the looters from putting their plan into action and alerted local archaeologists. They found a 12 by 7 foot opening that had recently been uncovered and went inside to look around. After performing tests, they dated the subterranean complex to the 9th century BC to the Neo-Assyrian period. It consists of an upper and lower galley containing rare artwork on the walls depicting a procession of Assyrian deities, as well as Aramaic writing. Unfortunately, the team could only uncover part of the complex before excavations were put on hold due to the site's instability. In the meantime, it's being protected by Turkey's Culture and Tourism Ministry. They have not yet found the site's original entrance and aren't entirely sure what this structure was used for. Researchers were able to identify three of the gods on the panel, including the god of thunder and storms, Hadad. This led them to believe that the complex possibly functioned as a ritual site for an ancient fertility cult. And now for a leper colony, but first, it's shout out time! I wanted to give a big shout out to Raygor Lamont and Bibi. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos about amazing discoveries. Number 7. Leprosy in the Caribbean The small island of Petite Moustique in the Caribbean may have been home to an early 19th century leper colony. This uninhabited island measures just 100 acres. It's part of the group of islands collectively known as St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The island has lots of hills and there are no easy boat landing areas or large beaches, so it wasn't great for a permanent settlement. But people have passed through there, as archaeologists learned in 2003, when they found a human skull on Petite Moustique. Experts recently dated it to sometime during the late 18th or early 19th century. They discovered cranial deformities that are consistent with leprosy. It's the earliest known solid evidence of the disease in the Americas, and one of just a handful of examples of leprosy being identified on a skeleton in the Western Hemisphere. It made sense back in the day to drop people off in this isolated place to keep them away from everyone else. 
Leprosy has historically been stigmatized because it's a visible condition that causes the hands, feet, and face to become noticeably disfigured. This stigma persists in some parts of the world today, even though leprosy is curable thanks to modern medicine. So when people were taken to places like Petite Moustique and cut off from the rest of society, it wasn't just out of fear of pathogens spreading, but to keep those unfortunate souls out of sight and out of mind. Number 6. Backyard Skeleton A homeowner in the Wellington, New Zealand suburb of Wadestown was recently taking care of her yard when she discovered a human skull buried less than a foot underground. It had no signs of trauma or decapitation around the time of death, despite being separated from the rest of the person's body. Police spoke with many experts who were able to trace the skull's origins back to a century ago. A former resident of the home told investigators he had discarded it, and a forensic examination verified it was a medical sample. Forensic anthropologist Dr. Angela Clark told the New Zealand Herald that it's impossible to perform reliable radiocarbon dating analysis on bones that are less than a century old. This is because of the radiation effects of atomic bomb testing during the 20th century. She said that it wasn't entirely unusual for someone to discover skulls that were used as medical specimens and turn them into her office. This leads her to believe that the person who buried it may have simply not known what else to do with it. As disturbing as it is to come across something like that, the motives aren't always sinister. It's been illegal in Wadestown for more than a century to bury people in graves outside cemeteries, according to historian Gabor Toth. He explained that any such burials required a special permit, that there weren't many and this wasn't one of them. Someone probably happened to have it in their possession and simply wanted to get rid of it. Who would you call first if you found a skull in your yard? Let me know in the comments below! Number 5. Persian Cup in Siberia While monitoring the melting permafrost on Siberia's Gadan Peninsula in 2016, a team of scientists discovered a fragment of a medieval bronze cup in Iran. It's the furthest north that a Persian artifact has ever been found in Siberia. This was the first time a discovery of its kind happened north of the Arctic Circle, according to researcher Andre Gusev, who spoke with the Siberian Times. In addition to the cup, the team unearthed a ceramic pot and a bronze knife handle. Researchers believe the cup was made sometime during the 10th or 11th century before being brought to Siberia around 200 years later. Found roughly 2,300 miles from where it was made, the artifact shows the vast trade networks that existed in a world where traveling took much longer in the absence of modern technology. Asian merchants appeared in modern-day Russia's Upper Kama region during the 6th and 7th centuries, according to scientist Dr. Arkady Baulo. They exchanged their wares for fur, walrus tusks, and hunting birds, which then made their way to Asia. Persian imports were highly valued among the indigenous Kanti and Mansi groups. They assigned ritual meaning to the objects, keeping them in holy places and offering them as gifts to their gods and spirits. They also used Persian dishes during festivals to serve ceremonial foods to the gods. Discoveries like this may become more common as the permafrost melts, and this is just one example of how the changing world is revealing ancient relics in places where we never expected to find them. Number 4. A Whale in Vermont While building a railroad in the landlocked state of Vermont back in 1849, a crew of workers was shocked to find a beluga whale skeleton. At first, nobody could explain why or how the remains of an ocean-dwelling creature were discovered in a farmer's field in the small town of Charlotte, roughly 200 miles away from the nearest ocean shoreline. Known as the Charlotte Whale, it's one of several whale carcasses that have turned up in Vermont, leaving authorities, experts, and residents baffled. Lacking any other likely explanation, some people saw the discoveries as evidence of the biblical flood described in the Old Testament. But there was a logical conclusion in the works even before the Charlotte Whale was discovered. Swiss geologist and Ice Age expert Louis Agassi was among the first scientists to realize that between 12,500 and 10,000 years ago, the Champlain Valley was submerged by a body of water. Known as the Champlain Sea, it was formed by surrounding glaciers, which pushed the ground to sea level under their enormous weight, allowing seawater to flood in. As the glaciers melted, the ground rose, and the Champlain Sea ceased to exist. Measuring 12 feet long, about the size of a car, the Charlotte Whale is believed to be an adult, although its gender is unknown. 
While the bones are too damaged for radiocarbon dating, scientists believe the creature lived around 11,000 years ago. Number 3. Prehistoric Remains in Downtown Miami While overseeing the demolition of a parking garage in downtown Miami last year, archaeologists discovered a collection of prehistoric artifacts, including human remains, bone fragments, and pottery shards. City archaeologist Adrian Espinosa Valdor said that one of the artifacts was a human skull that was found nearly six feet underground. He said that it was buried deliberately and believes that the objects are connected to the Tequesta Native American tribe that once lived in the area. While it may seem natural to think that archaeological sites and artifacts would have been uncovered before the city was filled with buildings, excavations weren't commonly carried out in the area until after the parking garage was built in 1972. Back then, it wasn't normal like it is now for archaeologists to investigate a site ahead of planned construction. Now it's required by law, and it's become clear through many discoveries that the area near the mouth of the Miami River saw a lot of activity during ancient times. These types of discoveries have created problems for Miami's developers in the past. They often have conflicts and legal battles with Native American groups and preservationists. Battles of this kind have also happened in New York and other cities where Native American historical sites have been discovered. Number 2. Out of Place Mangrove Trees Scientists were baffled when they learned mangrove trees happened to be growing and thriving about 200 kilometers inland on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Red mangrove trees grow in salt water and are typically only found near the ocean in tropical coastal habitats throughout the Americas. Locals have long known about the trees, but experts only learned about their existence relatively recently. Ever since then, they've been trying to figure out how the mangrove trees survived in a freshwater habitat. A team of researchers announced they believed they had come up with the answer after comparing the freshwater mangrove's DNA to samples from the nearest coastal mangrove populations. By examining the differences in the trees' genomes, they determined that the inland mangroves have been isolated in their freshwater environment for roughly 125,000 years. At that time, global temperatures and sea levels were much higher than they are today, leading scientists to believe that the area where the freshwater mangroves now sit was once a coastal region. When the climate cooled and the ocean receded, the trees managed to survive the transition by genetically adapting to the changing environment. It seems surprising that this is even possible, but the mangrove forest is home to several other species that survived extreme environmental changes. It's an extremely unique ecosystem filled with fish, turtles, plant life, and other life forms that were able to survive under vastly challenging circumstances. They did this while the type of habitat they had always known changed completely. Experts don't know how they did this and are continuing to study the site, hoping to learn more about their impressive resilience. Number 1. A boat in the desert. In 2016, a well-preserved boat was unearthed in the tomb of a high-ranking official in the ancient Egyptian necropolis of Abu Sir. It was remarkably well-preserved despite being 4,500 years old, with planks and ropes that were still intact, and it's one of just a handful of ancient Egyptian boats that were found in decent condition. Measuring 60 feet long, about the length of a bowling lane, the valuable cedar boat is an unusually large and lavish grave for a non-royal member of society, and it seems more than slightly out of place in the incredibly hot and dry desert environment. Abu Sir is near the Nile River, which the ancient Egyptians often used for transporting goods and people. Boats became increasingly important throughout the Fourth Dynasty for their role in international trade and were symbols of state power, according to Texas A&M University researcher Douglas Inglis. Burials in boats were fairly common at certain points during Egypt's Old Kingdom period. It's unknown whether the vessel found at Abu Sir was actually used for sailing. Experts don't know why the Egyptians practiced boat burials, but they believe that they may have been built to serve the dead in the afterlife or to carry their owners on the journey to the hereafter. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!